In April 1950, William Morrison and Brushy Bill Roberts had a meeting with Severo Gallegos of Rudoso, New Mexico. The purpose of the meeting was to gather affidavits to prove Brushy Bill's identity as William H. Bonney, alias Billy the Kid, to New Mexico Governor Thomas Mabry in the hopes that Mabry would grant Brushy Bill a pardon that he says was offered to Billy the Kid by Governor Lou Wallace years before. Upon meeting Gallegos, Morrison mentioned that he had an old friend in his room that he would like Gallegos to meet. When Gallegos entered the room, Morrison introduced the friend as William H. Bonney. After several hours of the two men talking, Gallegos declined to identify him as Billy the Kid, saying that the man before him was not old enough. Morrison persisted, and the next day, at another meeting between the two old men, Gallegos decided, based on some small brown spots in Brushy Bill's eyes, that he was indeed William H. Bonney. For some reason, Morrison waited more than seven months to bring Gallegos before notary public Lily May Ward in Lincoln County, New Mexico, to swear out the affidavit on November the 11th, 1950. Nowhere in Gallegos' affidavit does it state that he declined to identify the old man as Billy the Kid on April the 1st, 1950, and only agreed on April 2nd after another several hours long meeting. In fact, in the affidavit, Gallego swears that he never saw Billy the Kid again after his escape from the Lincoln County Jail until the first day of April 1950, and that after talking to Billy for several hours on April 1st, the affiant knows from conversation and looking him over that Billy the Kid was the same person as O.L. Roberts, who visited here in Ruidoso. Reading further into the affidavit, it states, This affiant further states that he never believed that Billy the Kid was killed by Sheriff Pat Garrett, that he heard from time to time throughout the years that Billy the Kid was still living. In contrast to Gallego's sworn statement in November 1950 is an interview he did with the Ruidoso News on July 30, 1948. In talking about the day of April 28, 1881, the day that Bonnie killed Bell and Ollinger and escaped the Lincoln County Jail, Severo Gallego says, and I quote, This day was the last time I ever saw Billy the Kid or any of my family did. We always knew he was dead. He would have come to see my brother Chavez. They were always such amigos, end quote. A further review of Gallego's assertions in the Ruidoso News article, dated July 30th, 1948, shows a number of questionable statements and recollections by Gallegos. Quote, I tell you how they caught Billy and what happened. So they caught him and put him in jail and sentenced him to hang three times to death. The three times was in case he didn't die the first time. End quote. Quote, he was fleeing into the Gainas Mountains to hide out when he was captured. During his escapade, he shot at and killed Johnny Hurley, a deputy sheriff. This man he killed following the instinct of all trapped humans when there is seemingly no other way out. End quote. Anyone named Johnny Hurley. In his recollections about what happened in the immediate aftermath of the killing of Ollinger, Gallego says, All us boys were frightened and started to run. Billy yelled to me, saying, Severo, don't run. Come help Gus, or Godfrey Goss. Get a horse and saddle from the corral. End quote. At this point, Gallego's story goes well off the rails when he says, quote, I knew Billy had helped my father and I must help him. I went to the corral, caught the horse, a big fine one, a black one with a white nose, took him back to Billy. Right then, Billy came out with every gun in the jail, the one he killed George with too. He broke every one over a big rock in the yard, end quote. By George... Gallegos is referring to Bob Ollinger. Testimony from a number of people who were in Lincoln on that fateful day say that Billy made his way onto the balcony with the shotgun that belonged to Ollinger, breaking it and throwing it down at his corpse. No one ever reported Billy carrying every gun from the armory out onto the street and breaking them. Gallegos continues, Then Goss called me, Severo, let's go upstairs and see what happened in the courthouse. The man and the boy started up the stairs with Severo Gallegos in the lead, and the part of the story he tells next he remembers too well. Quote, Going upstairs, I stumbled. 
Look down. There was a dead man. I was scared to death. It was the jailer. I ran. End quote. All contemporary accounts of that day have Bell dying and falling out of the back door into the arms of Godfrey Goss, and not anywhere on the stairwell or up on the second floor of the courthouse. So, can the memory of Severo Gallegos be trusted to verify the identity of brushy Bill Roberts as William H. Bonney, alias Billy the Kid? In July of 1948, he states that he knew that the kid was dead, for if he was alive, he would have come back to visit his brother. In April 1950, he states that he knew Billy the Kid was never killed by Pat Garrett. His recollections of April 28, 1881, also differ drastically from contemporary testimony of others who were there. How useful is the affidavit of Severo Gallegos as it relates to identifying brushy Bill Roberts as Billy the Kid? That's up to you to decide.